must not be too knowing. There's lots of things we have to close our eyes. Don't take to seeing double. a trade-off, though some poor souls get laid off, a sojournary few will strike it rich. The best like Bernie made of, find ways to promenade of, the, the others end up, end up in a You'll tell me I'm mistaken That Bernie M was taken That he will spend his dotage behind bars I say friend and say wake it Wake up and smell the bacon With him there's no goodbyes Just no Good evening, folks. I'm your V-chip monitor, prominent New York attorney, William J. Maloney. My job, in a sense, is to protect yourselves from yourselves. Now, given that the theme of tonight's ceremony is advertised to be risk, well, I have a, a few concerns. Uh, I've obtained uh, this list of uh, activities that uh, these uh, people planned to do tonight, and uh, I'm sorry to say that some of them are just too uh, risky. I'm sorry to be a spoil sport. We all enjoy having a good time, but uh, come on, really. Um, here are the items that, thanks to my scrutiny, will not, uh, repeat, not uh, be done tonight. Uh, we had a laparoscop laparoscopic surgery demonstration. <laughs> Oof. No, no. A three pound lump of potassium dropped into a bucket of water. Uh, 
I, Google, I Googled that. That's dangerous. Uh, tarring and feathering of a university endowments fund manager. I, uh, I got a legal opinion that uh, waterboarding would have been all right, but tarring and feathering, no. Uh, they were planning on a sledgehammer toss from the, the balcony. Uh, hey, you there, put that away and sit down, would you? You're not doing it. A vigorous lecture by ex-president of a famous university about how he is going to save the economy. Uh, that's not going to happen. Uh, well, the, the lecture, the lecture is not going to happen. Uh, and then we have a sword swallowing demonstration after which several strangers removed the sword the, from the sword swallower's throat. Uh, no. Um, I don't know. You know, that last one's not particularly risky. Uh, Uh, not, not to me, anyway. Uh, actually, I have no objection to a sword-swallowing demonstration, after which several strangers remove the sword from the sword-swallower's throat. Uh, you may proceed. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the IG. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 19th first annual IG Nobel Prize ceremony. In just a moment, the new IG Nobel Prize winners will arrive. All of our Nobel laureates, past IG Nobel, oh, thank you. That's good. All of our Nobel laureates, past Ig Nobel Prize winners, 24-7 lecturers, and other ignitaries are here on stage awaiting them. Uh, guys, perhaps you could all stand up, maybe uh, give a wave. Yeah. All right. Thanks. And now, here they are. Please welcome the new Ig Nobel Prize winners. I'm Karen Hopkin, creator of the Stud Muffins of Science calendar. I am also the creator of Christopher Hopkin. Thank you. I welcome you uh, to this year's Ig Nobel Prize ceremony. <laughs> We're gathered here tonight at Sanders Theater at Harvard University. And I need my translators, please, my translators to step up to the microphone. My son is drinking. My translators are not here yet. It's, it's a fine night. The proceedings tonight will be simultaneously translated into Japanese. Alles wat u and simultaneously, zal worden vertaald in het Nederlands, zodat wij ook in Holland kunnen meegenemen. And simultaneously and prematurely translated into Dutch. 
En... Nog een keer dan, zodat u het goed kunt horen. Alles wat u mee aan, kunt u allemaal meeluisteren in het Nederlands. And simultaneously translated into Polish. Wszystko zostanie przetłumaczone na polski co do słowa. And simultaneously translated into risk management speak. I have no comment at this time. <laughs> and now, the grand introduction of the delegations, led by the exalted Grand High Panjandrum of Delegations, Louise Sacco. As we introduce each delegation, it will make its presence known by standing up and twirling in place, three times counterclockwise. Please greet them all with the respect they deserve. Let's begin the introductions. First, marching, we have the Texans for the Advancement of High-Risk Lifestyle Choices. Fire is fun, and knives are cool, and those rules your mother taught you. Fire is fun, knives are cool, and those rules your mother taught you were an attempt to subordinate your innate right to live a free life of pleasure and happiness. Okay. Uh, now we have the Harvard Computer Society. And marching, we have the Third East Traveling Animal Zoo. We have the lifelong... Ladies and gentlemen, there's more. We have the lifelong kindergarten research group from the MIT Media Lab. They, they are concerned with the risks of prolonged exposure to finger paints. We have the Yale Cognition Group, Take a Chance on the Dream. Marching, we have lawyers for and against risk. We have, we also have the, we also have the Knight Science Journalism Fellows of MIT, the Science Imposters. We have the Harvard Society of Physics Students. They got lungs. We have the Henry Eyring Group. Thank you. Marching, we have the Wellesley Women at Risk of Changing the World. We also tonight have the Harvard Radcliffe Science Fiction Association. As well as Boston Mensa, the organization for people who score in the abnormal range on certain psychological tests. Finally, marching, we have the Museum of Bad Art, celebrating artists. They, of course, are celebrating artists who take, wait for it, risks. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, literati, glitterati, pseudo-intellectuals, and quasi-pseudo-intellectuals, <laughs> and deposed dictators, may I introduce our master of ceremonies, the editor of the Annals of Improbable Research, Chief Airhead, Mark Abrams. <laughs> We are gathered here tonight to honor some remarkable individuals and groups. 
Each of the winners has done something that first makes people laugh and then makes them think. The Ig Nobel Prize ceremony is produced by the Science Humor Magazine, the Annals of Improbable Research, and it's co-sponsored by the Harvard Radcliffe Science, you can applaud, thank you. It's co-sponsored proudly by the Harvard Radcliffe Science Fiction Association and the Harvard Radcliffe Society of Physics Students and by the Harvard Computer Society. Tonight, 10 prizes will be given. The achievements speak for themselves, all too eloquently. <laughs> the editors of the Annals of Improbable Research have chosen a theme for this year's ceremony. As you have heard, this year's theme is risk. <laughs> risk. <laughs> and now let me introduce some of the several hundred people who are sitting here on the stage including several Nobel laureates who have snuck up since the last time they were mentioned and have not had a chance to stand up and gain your attention. Uh, 1993 Nobel laureate in physiology or medicine from New England Biolabs, Rich Roberts. Uh, 2001 Nobel laureate in physics from MIT, Wolfgang Ketterle. Uh, 1986 Nobel Laureate in Chemistry from Texas A&M and Harvard Dudley Hirschbach. Uh, 2005 Nobel Laureate in Physics and a man who for more than a decade has humbly swept paper airplanes from the stage here at the Ig Nobel Ceremony, Roy Glauber. Uh, 2004 Nobel Laureate in Physics from MIT, Frank Wilczek. Uh, 2008 Nobel Laureate in Chemistry from Columbia University, Martin Chalfie. Uh, 2008 Nobel Laureate in Economics, Paul Krugman. who was part of the ceremony back in 1993, and we welcome him back. Uh, 1976 Nobel Laureate in Chemistry from Harvard University, who is about to celebrate his 90th birthday party, William Lipscomb. Uh, 1990 Nobel Laureate in Physics from MIT, Jerome Friedman. As usual was prevented from joining us, he appears now via the magic of audio tape and slides. That's not him. And I have just been told that we have lost the audio tape. <laughs> At any rate, thank you, Professor Friedman. Have I, have I forgotten anyone? We have a couple other people who may sneak up on the stage at some point. We'll perhaps introduce them when they do. Now, let's meet some of the other authority figures who are here on the stage. Our major domo, Gary Dreyfus. The Minor Domos, Genevieve Reynolds, Julia Lunetta, Anna Elisiva, Zach Fisher, Pico Todd, Danielle Streifthau. Randall Monroe was going to be here. He's come down with the flu. So hello, Randall, watching us on the web. The prize deliverer, Tabitha Bombach. The slide jockey sitting way in the back, Jerry Sullivan, and misconduct, Robin Abrams. <laughs> the tech crew who labor darkly, David Kessler, Joshua Kroll, Quentin Smith, Greg Brockman, and the lighting crew who labor brightly, Rob Sanders and Hunter Heinlein. 
the sound engineers who labor noiselessly most of the time, Jeff Bryant, Miles Smith, and Frank Cunningham. Be aware, they are laboring heroically with some equipment that five minutes before we started decided to blow up, so we'll see what happens. The lurking presences, who I understand are lurking in the darkness, but we'll see. Danny Adams, Joe McGuire, Susan Caney, Naomi Stephen, and Rose Fox. If any of you are up here, come and take a bow. The performing chemists, Daniel Rosenberg and Joost Bonson. And Isabel. Rosenberg. The human spotlights, glittery Jim Brett and Katrina Rosenberg and Mahadi Chintapali. The human curtain rods, Emily Coombs and Deborah Wise. The official keepers of the mop who will sweep detritus from our stage, Sylvia Rosenberg. Julia Elisiva, and Roy Glauber. <laughs> Our command and control elements, the Ig Nobel referee, Mr. John Barrett. The ringmaster. The ringmaster, Peter Van Lindonk. who has arrived just yesterday from Holland for this. Then for those of you who are worried about sex and violence, our V-chip monitor will attempt to block anything offensive from reaching your eyes, ears, or fingertips. Here is our V-chip monitor, noted New York attorney, William J. Maloney. Uh, Mr. Maloney, will you please demonstrate your displeasure? Thank you. As you may know, we used to have a problem in the ceremony. Um, for many years, many of the speakers would exceed their allotted time. <laughs> and here's how we now solve that problem. Please welcome the charming, delightful, ever so cute, Miss Sweetie Poo. Miss Sweetie Poo is eight years old. I will now ask Miss Sweetie, to, uh, Miss Sweetie Poo, would you please demonstrate what you will do when somebody exceeds his or her allotted time. Please stop, I'm bored. Please stop, I'm bored. Please stop, I'm bored. Thank you, Miss Sweetie Poo. So that's what Miss Sweetie Poo will do. Thank you, thank you, Miss Sweetie Poo. So Miss Sweetie Poo will be on duty Thank you, Miss Sweetie Poo. Thank you. <laughs> On with the introductions. Our house musicians, the group, the Pennywise Guys, who you heard at the beginning of the show here, led by Nick Karstoyu. <laughs> the Ig Nobel operatic pianist extraordinaire, Brandon Grimmett. The bartender and opera conductor, Magnifico, David Stockton. The singing barmaid, Roberta Gilbert. The non-singing bar fly, Mark Andelman. And there are many other important people up here. You'll meet them later. A uh, special hello to everybody watching live around the world on the webcast, especially to the people at the Ig Nobel Party in Philadelphia at the Chemical Heritage Society. And as you probably know, and almost certainly know if you're at one of these places watching, we are telecasting this live on the internet. Uh, thanks to generous support from the Harvard Extension School. So thank you very much to them. And thanks also to Harvard FAS IT, to MIT Student Cable, and to Justin.tv. And the ceremony will later be broadcast on National Public Radio's Talk of the Nation with Ira Flato. That, 
who will be on the day after Thanksgiving. All right, so thank you for bearing through all that. Now it's my honor to introduce our presiding monarchs. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the king and queen. Their Majesties, the King and the Queen of Swedish Meatballs. Please remain standing and stop drumming. Please remain standing, however, while they, thank you, while they, I thought I said thank you. Please remain standing while they do the traditional Remember I mentioned the sound system has some problems. <laughs> Please remain standing while they do the traditional royal triple, triple osculation. One. Was that one? one. Two. <laughs> this used to go more smoothly. Three. And that's plenty. Thank you very much. <laughs> you may be seated. And now, Professor Jean Burko Gleason will deliver the traditional Ig Nobel welcome, welcome speech. Welcome, welcome. We are honored. We are honored to have with us tonight several past Ig Nobel winners who have come back to take a bow and say a few words. The 2008, yeah, the 2008 Ig Nobel Medicine Prize was awarded to the authors of two medical studies testing whether Coca-Cola is an effective spermicide. Please welcome back the lead investigator from the very first study, Dr. Deborah Anderson. It's been an honor and certainly a pleasure to have been awarded this Ig Nobel Prize. And if you dare to have some fun in the lab, you too could be here someday. Um, we've continued our research in the lab on Coca-Cola. And I must warn you, folks, don't try this at home. It's too risky. The 2008 Ig Nobel Medicine Prize was awarded to the team who showed that high-priced fake medicine is more effective than low-priced <laughs> fake medicine. Please welcome a member of that team, Rebecca Weber. So since, since the uh, topic of today is risk, I just want to warn everybody that if me or any of my co-authors ever ask you to be in an experiment, you should probably run the other way because not only were we studying placebos, but pain placebos, which means we had to give you pain first. <laughs> the 2006 Ig Nobel Medicine Prize was awarded to the author of the medical report, Termination of Intractable Hiccups with Digital Rectal Massage. Please give a portion of a hand to Dr. Francis Fezmeyer. Thank you, thank you. As always, it is a great pleasure to be here at my old alma mater, class of 1981. 
In keeping with tonight's theme, risk, the Webster Dictionary defines risk as the possibility of loss or injury. But there are many types of risk. Spiritual risk. Betting on the Red Sox to beat the Yankees in the playoff. Physical risk. Trying to win a Darwin Award while avoiding death in the process. <laughs> Emotional risk. Being foolish enough to actually accept an ignoble prize. That's me. But if you ask my sons, Forrest and Hunter Fessmeyer, what real risk entails, they That was my son, by the way. <laughs> they will tell you that it is developing intractable hiccups while their father is home. <laughs> Hiccup at your own risk. <laughs> the 1996 Ig Nobel Art Prize was awarded to the creator of the plastic pink flamingo. Please welcome back. Don Featherstone and his wife, Nancy Featherstone. Well, we're dressed for risk. We've got pink flamingos and an alligator crawling the floor. The plastic pink flamingo has three natural enemies. One is plastic alligators, <laughs> plastic sharks, and the Neighborhood Beautification Committee. <laughs> Very risky. <laughs> The 2007 Ig Nobel Medicine Prize was awarded to the co-authors of the medical report, Sword Swallowing and Its Side Effects. Please welcome back one of the surviving members of that team, the president of the Sword Swallowers International Association, Dan Meyer. Thank you. It was a uh, huge honor to receive the 2007 Ig Nobel Prize in Medicine. Uh, what I do is risky. Tonight, you may not realize, but we just set a world record by having two Nobel laureates remove the sword from my throat earlier this evening. That was a huge risk. Now we are going to try and raise that risk another notch. We're going to try and top that record by having a number of total strangers, a number of Nobel laureates and acclaimed scientists remove the sword from my throat at the same time. Actually, it looks like we have so many and we have not rehearsed this, <laughs> which only increases the risk. So I believe we may even have to raise the risk a little bit more and have some of them remove the sword with a whip.
the 2000 Ig Nobel Biology Prize winner, Case Muliker, had hoped to be with us, but a sudden obligation prevented him from traveling here from the Netherlands. Case, of course, <laughs> produced the first scientific report of homosexual necrophilia in the mallard duck. He sends you his greetings. He stayed up late to watch us. Hi, Case. Uh, if you come to the IG Informal Lectures this Saturday afternoon at MIT, you'll see some of these same past winners and all of the new winners uh, trying their best to explain what they did and perhaps even why. <laughs> and now, the keynote speech on the topic of risk will be given by Benoit Mandelbrot. Professor Mandelbrot invented the mathematical concept of fractals. He has also explored the wildness and risk in financial markets. Please welcome Benoit Mandelbrot. Well, let me think, let me think. Uh, the occasion calls for a serious lecture. Really timely and truly boring. <laughs> this morning, <clears throat> I gave a talk on financial prices, on fractals. Well, prices dancing and jumping along the time. The time. Should I really repeat the same talk tonight? Well, I don't think so. <laughs> but nobody will notice, we're all sleeping. <laughs> well, well, well. So, my talk was one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Is that boring enough? Nobody's stopping me. <laughs> one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. One, two, one. Please stop. Thank you. Bored. Thank you. Stop. I'm bored. Thank you. Please. <laughs> I'm bored. Thank you. Now, here's a musical treat, the world premiere of a new mini-opera called The Big Bank Opera. There are four acts, one now, three later. The opera stars Maria Ferranti, Ben Sears, and pianist Brandon Grimmett with conductor David Stockton. And I here is our narrator, Karen Hopkin. I love your brain, big boy. Thank you, Schmoopy. Tonight's opera takes place in a swanky bar on Wall Street. It begins a few years ago, before things really began to boom. Two ambitious young bankers are sitting next to each other at the bar. And they get talking, and at first it's all business. A few drinks from now, their talk will naturally turn to true love. Well, to the thing they both truly love, how to dominate the financial world. Let's all belly up to the bar and watch these two young bankers impress each other. I say only big banks are robust. A bank that's small gets ground to dust. To survive, a small bank must adjust. Must. Or else go bust. I say small bank bankers all lack lust. They all think small, they all get fussed. If you want to join the upper crust, why then they must get their hair must. You say think big, get nonplussed. They call you pig. They are disgusting. Banks need bigger banks to adulate. Firms that start small then dominate. Titans of finance make their own fate. They do not wait. They innovate. Don't give an inch. Like Merrill Lynch, don't pay much tax like, like Goldman, Goldman Sachs. Sachs. <laughs> Lehman Brothers, that's my kind of bank. It's not small, though 
which got swank It made all their bankers walk the plank And their bank sank Went down the tank You see to me It's the people It's all about the people I don't want to know If you took the country of Iceland, which is quite small, oh, it's slightly bland, and gave all its bankers a free hand, they'd prosper and be rich and tanned. New bankers dare to make new rules and to prepare new banking tools. Some special purpose high-yield instrument but over all, I'm confident, be the special thing that we all went and slightly bent. Risk, debt, and complexity. Look in my eyes, that's what you see. Let's go and hawk and buy some stock in Northern Rock. I love meeting people I've just met. If they know how to leverage debt, then I know I've made a prudent bet. If then rien, <laughs> and now let's get it over with, ladies and gentlemen, the awarding of the 2009 Ig Nobel Prizes. This year's winners have truly earned their prizes. Karen, tell them what they've won. Right behind you, babe. Thank you. Uh, this year's winners uh, will each take home an Ig Nobel Prize. <laughs> What else? Um, oh, a piece of paper that says they've won an Ig Nobel Prize. Uh, and uh, anything about it? Signed by several Nobel laureates. Ah. And uh, is that all? What else could they want? Uh, interesting question. Thank you, Karen. <laughs> And now, our winners, the Veterinary Medicine Prize. The Ig Nobel Prize in Veterinary Medicine is awarded to Catherine Douglas and Peter Rowlandson of Newcastle University in the UK for showing that cows who have names give more milk than cows that are nameless. Here is Peter Rowlandson.
Thank you. I actually grew up on a dairy farm in Suffolk, about 15 miles from Cambridge, and I find myself geographically challenged being here, yet over 3,000 miles from home. <laughs> Kath, the senior author of this work, is unable to be here. Along the theme of risk, <laughs> she was unaware of the contraceptive benefits of Coca-Cola, Resulting in pregnancy, she's recently had a baby. You can see that her baby girl is a black and white Holstein Frisian. <laughs> At Newcastle, we have an interest in interactions between humans and domestic animals. We undertook a series of studies on young dairy cattle which showed benefits of positive treatment during rearing. From a survey came the finding that cows with names gave more milk. So what does this tell us? It's just part of good stockmanship. Farmers that know and care for their cows. There are many that I would like to thank. Some humans, but mainly cows. <laughs> you. So thank you. Thank you to Bluebell, my father's favorite cow. Clover, Buttercup, Daisy, have you noticed this preference for flower names? In, there are other names. There, I could go on with lots of cow names that are very, very popular. What can I do? Fortunately, for Miss Sweetie Poo, some milk and a cuddly cow. <laughs> the Peace Prize, the Ig Nobel Peace Prize is awarded to Stefan Bolliger, Stefan Ross, Lars Osterhelweg, Michael Tali, and Biet Knubel of the University of Bern, Switzerland, for determining by experiment whether it is better to be smashed over the head with a full bottle of beer or with an empty bottle. Here is Stefan Bolliger. Thank you ever so much, especially for the long handshake. <laughs> in the film industry, everything looks so easy. For instance, in a bar brawl, somebody can take a bottle and just smash it as easy as nothing over somebody else's head. For instance, <laughs> John Wayne wouldn't even flinker. But what's it like in real life? We've been asked this question on several occasions by members of the court. So we decided to find out whether we can actually break full beer bottles on a human skull, and if not, whether these bottles will actually break the human skull. We performed a very simple experiment. We tested the fracture threshold of full and empty beer bottles in a drop tower. The full beer bottles broke at 30 joules, the empty ones at 40 joules. Doesn't sound like much, especially if you're talking about Barb Rawls and John Wayne. But if you look at the literature, then the human skull will break somewhere between 14 and 68 joules. So you can actually crack a skull with a beer bottle. And that's the best thing. The empty beer bottle is even more capable of inflicting serious harm. And you have all the enjoyment of the beer before. <laughs> Luckily, this was only a prop because, as you, if you paid attention, you might have gathered if this had been a real. Oh, thank you! You'd have had to pull me out on a stretcher. Thank you!
Would the V-chip monitor approach the lectern, please? Okay. Thank you. I'm your V-chip monitor. Please listen carefully to this safety and recycling announcement. It is almost, and I emphasize almost, uh, time to throw the paper airplanes. <laughs> Remember what's important. Safety, accuracy, recycling, safety, and risk. I, I mean, minimize risk. Please, if you have skill at paper airplane throwing, please aim at the recycling target. Not at the people, not at me, at the human aerodrome. It's right over there. Everyone else, at least try to hit the human aerodrome. On your mark, you said throw! Please give your attention to Nobel laureate Dudley Hirschbach. Let us now have a moment of science. It's time now for Act Two of our mini opera, The Big Bank Opera. Here is our narrator, Karen Hopkin. Thanks, Pumpkin. It's later that same night. Our two ambitious young bankers are still in the swanky bar on Wall Street. They've identified the world's biggest problem. The world's biggest problem, you see, is that banks are treated like children. The problem has an obvious solution. Children must be allowed to grow up. One of the bankers has just gone to the men's room. Let's watch, let's watch now as he returns to the bar and tells us exactly how to solve the world's biggest problem. Robert Rubin. Alan Greenspan. Larry Summers, Senator Graham, treating a bank like a child does the bank no good. La 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 la. They've got to let a bank grow into adulthood. La 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 
they treat every poor bank like it's a small baby, a poor reckless child. As if banks could somehow go wild, somehow go wild. So we will figure out how to get round the gripers. La 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 la. Gripers who keep the banks stifled in diapers. La 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 la. They would shrink every bank down to a mere stub, so small that it could drown in a bathtub. La 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 la. La 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 la. Regulate lending, regulate spending, regulate everything and everyone. With childish rules and childish guidelines, stifle the profits and stifle the fun. La 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 Selling securities, no, it's too risky, no, it's too risky, securities, no, no, it's too risky, no, no, it's too risky, no, it's too risky, securities, no. Why don't they trust banks? Why be so fearful? Why be so whiny? Banks are so tiny. Why be so whiny? La 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 la. Banks are so tiny. La 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 la. La la. Each bank is a baby, an innocent child, an innocent child. Yet they say banks could somehow go wild, somehow go wild. Off with the diapers, no more ass wipers. No more critiquing, let's do some tweaking. Think of a mortgage, let's make it subprime. Now valuate it, triple A rate it. If we can guilt hedge it, and if we can hedge it, and securitize it, and evangelize it, so very simple. We just need to figure out, just need to figure out, just figure out. Figure out, figure out, figure out, figure out, figure out, figure out, figure out. A way, a way, I think I see a way. It's simple, so very easy. Just change some rules, just change some rules, just change some rules. It will be easy, it will be easy, it will be easy. Just change some rules. Figure out a way, a figure out. A way, figure out means, figure out ends, figure out means, figure out ends, figure on friends, figure on friends, figure on friends, figure on friends, figure out how it's get who we need to get to remove diapers from every bank, from every bank, from every bank, from every bank, from every bank. Soon we will figure out who we will need to get. Soon we will figure out who we will need to get. Who can make changes? Who can make changes? Who can make changes to the right rules? Soon we will figure out who we will need to get. Soon we will figure out who we will need to get. Who can make changes? Who can make changes? Who can make changes to the right rules? We'll remove the diapers from every bank. We'll remove the diapers from every bank, from every bank, from every bank, from every bank. Ben Sears. And
Brandon Grimmett. The Economics Prize. The Ig Nobel Economics Prize is awarded this year to the directors, executives, and auditors of four Icelandic banks, Kaupthing Bank, Landsbanki, Glitnir Bank, and Central Bank of Iceland for demonstrating that tiny banks can rapidly transform themselves into huge banks and vice versa. <laughs> and that similar things can be done to an entire national economy. <laughs> the winners could not or would not be with us tonight. <laughs> the Chemistry Prize. The Ig Nobel Chemistry Prize is awarded to Javier Morales, Miguel Apatica, and Victor Castaño of the National Autonomous University of Mexico for creating diamonds from liquid, specifically from tequila. Here are Javier Morales and Miguel Apatica. Well, what a night. Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Cheers. <laughs> well, we first uh, would like to thank Universidad Nacional Autónoma de México, as well as Universidad Autónoma de Nuevo León, for their support. And um, regarding this research, um, there is a, a, a lot of information and comments uh, on this topic. And um, however, the best uh, comment I ever read uh, about uh, two weeks ago is as follows. Um, it says, um, uh, researchers, have a sense of humor, even in the most serious research. And, uh, and uh, uh, here I have a, a tequila similar that I have used in this research. And uh, we'd like to share with all of you. So cheers. 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 To you. Hello. First of all, I want to thank God and every one of you for coming here today. I want to start this speech by asking you two questions. The first question is, do you think there is a special system to grow diamond from tequila? Yes. <laughs> uh, actually, no. <laughs> the, second, the second one. The second question is, do you think there is a need for a scanning electron microscope to see nano and micro diamonds? <laughs> of course not. <laughs> of course not. And the reason is that when you drink a lot of tequila, you will start doing and seeing anything you want. <laughs> this is a yuck, but... <laughs> Uh -huh. this, this is a yes, but also true. <laughs> I thought it was going to be water. <laughs> All right, now get set for something special, the 24-7 lectures. We've invited several of the world's top thinkers to tell us very briefly what they're thinking about. Each 24-7 lecturer will explain his or her subject 
twice. First, a complete technical description in 24 seconds. And then, after a brief pause, a clear summary that anyone can understand in seven words. <laughs> the 24-second time limit will be enforced by our referee, Mr. John Barrett. Uh, Mr. Barrett? <laughs> Mr. Barrett, do you have any advice uh, you can offer to our lecturers? Yes, Mark. Gentlemen, keep it clean. <laughs> Thank you. All right, now let's have the first group of 24-7 lecturers. Will the actuaries bar the doors? <laughs> the first 24-7 lecture will be delivered by Wade Adams, director of the Richard E. Smalley Institute for Nanoscale Science and Technology at Rice University. His topic, nanotechnology. First, a complete technical description in 24 seconds. On your mark, get set, go. $2.7 trillion industry by 2015, solutions to top 10 problems facing humanity in the next 50 years. Gold nanoshells, cancer therapy, bulky balls, MRI contrast, contrast enhancers, graphene ribbons, oil recovery, carbon nanotubes, ballistic conducting grid wire, nanoelectronics, smaller, faster, cheaper, nanophotonic sensors, nanomembranes, water filtration, ultra lightweight, strong nanocomposites, energy efficient SUVs. Rick Smalley's challenge be a scientist, save the world. And now, a clear summary that anyone can understand in seven words. On your mark, get set, go. Nanotechnology, making small stuff do big things. The next 24-7 lecture will be delivered by Paul Krugman, professor of economics and international affairs at Princeton University and 2008 Nobel laureate in economics. His topic, I believe, is economics. Is that? That's it. His topic, economics. First, a complete technical description in 24 seconds. On your mark, get set, go. Uh, decentralized constrained optimization by maximizing agents with well-defined con convex objective functions and or convex production functions, engaging in exchange and production with free disposal, leads in the absence of externalities, market power, and other distortions to convergence on an equilibrium characterized by Pareto optimality. And now a clear summary that anyone can understand in seven words. On your mark, get set, go. Greedy people competing make the world go round. <laughs> the next 24-7 lecture will be delivered by Stephen Wolfram, creator of Wolfram Alpha and of Mathematica and author of the book A New Kind of Science. His topic, genius. <laughs> First, a complete technical description in 24 seconds. On your mark, get set, go. Every day, lots gets discovered and, and invented. It, it's actually pretty predictable. There's a flow to it. Genius is something alien. It's hard to measure or classify. That's the point. One day, most of it will come from machines. But for now, it's just us, single people with at most one big idea per lifetime. And now, a clear summary that anyone can understand in seven words. On your mark, get set, go. A surprise to the sequence of civilization. The final 24-7 lecture will be delivered by Dr. Deborah J. Anderson, professor of obstetrics, gynecology, and microbiology at Boston University School of Medicine and 2008 Ig Nobel Medicine Prize winner. Her topic, contraception. <laughs> First, a complete technical description in 24 seconds. On your mark, get set, go. 
Reliable, reversible contraception. Women have pills, rings, patches, implant sponges, and IUDs, spermicides, diaphragms, cervical caps, female condoms, and Plan B. Men have condoms. <laughs> and, and, and did I mention condoms? <laughs> <laughs> and now, a clear summary that anyone can understand in seven words. On your mark, get set, go. Male contraception, sheath it or beat it. <laughs> the Medicine Prize. The Ig Nobel Prize in Medicine is awarded this year to Donald Unger of Thousand Oaks, California, for investigating a possible cause of arthritis of the fingers by diligently cracking the knuckles of his left hand, but never cracking the knuckles of his right hand every day for more than 60 years. Here is Dr. Unger. I want to thank the Ig Nobel Group for giving me my 15 minutes of fame. On the other hand, after 60 years of knuckle cracking, perhaps I deserve an award. <laughs> now, the only thing left for me to decide is what I want on my tombstone. <laughs> Here lies, as you may know, most tombstones are absolutely a bore. Here lies Joe Blow. He was a beloved father, son, whatever. Now, if you want a good tombstone, think about uh, Mel Blake the voice of Bugs Bunny, who on his tombstone it says, the, 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 that's all, folks. <laughs> now, on my, on my tombstone, I wanted to say, here lies Don Unger, who finally has quit cracking his knuckles. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> the Physics Prize. The Ig Nobel Physics Prize is awarded this year to Katherine Whitcomb of the University of Cincinnati, Daniel Lieberman of Harvard University, and Liza Shapiro of the University of Texas for analytically determining why pregnant women don't tip over. Here are Katherine Whitcomb and Daniel Lieberman. Well, good evening, and thank you for this wonderful award. Any pregnant women in the house tonight? Uh, they don't have sex in Cambridge. No sex in Cambridge. Well, Dan and I are pregnant. Uh, yeah, but I want, to, I, want to, I want to deny the pernicious rumors that Catherine got me pregnant. Not true. <laughs> Along with our uh, co-author, Eliza, we want to dedicate this award to pregnant bipeds, females, who for seven million years have been carrying fetal load, and that's nine kilograms of babies, breasts, placenta, <laughs> fat, and fluids without tipping over. <laughs> Okay. Our secret, our secret for balance is we lean back. <laughs> and to avoid the risk of, sh of sheer force, we have evolved three wedged lumbar vertebrae. And we also want to dedicate this award to all those male hominids who've been pregnant over the last seven million years. Now, granted, <laughs> There haven't been many, and most of them have been on Oprah. Um, and probably in the past, they were on Paleo Oprah. 
But their problem, as I can tell you right now, is that we only have two lumbar vertebra that are wedged, so we can't spread those shearing forces over as many vertebra. And I can tell you it causes back pain and all kinds of problems. I feel awful. I can't, you know, have to pee all the time. And I, and, and you know, I'm at risk of losing my job because we don't have informed consent. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. <laughs> We have a demonstration. Wait, 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 please, Eric. <laughs> This is a little embarrassing. Uh, we had a demonstration planned. Uh, her water broke. So. <laughs> and now our V-chip monitor. Thank you, Mark. Uh, I am your V-chip monitor. Please listen carefully to this safety and recycling announcement. It is almost, and I emphasize the almost, time to throw the paper airplanes. Remember what's important, safety, accuracy, recycling, and safety, uh, not risk. All of you try to hit the human aerodrome, uh, at least uh, try to hit it. Now, please give your attention to Nobel laureate Wolfgang Ketterla. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my special pleasure to announce a moment of science. Einen Augenblick für die Wissenschaft. It's time for act three of the Big Bank Opera. Here is our narrator, Karen Hopkin. Thanks, Sugar Lips. Several years have gone by since we saw our young bankers. Several good years. Like all young bankers, these two became wildly successful. Their love of banking has paid dividends, which they used to purchase stock, which they swapped for a bundle of derivatives. And then, suddenly, it all went bad. The banking industry collapsed in a giant implosion. Let's listen as one of our no longer quite so young bankers explains, for the crowd in the bar, the whole history of big banks, where they came from, how they got big, and what happened to them. Here, ladies and gentlemen, is the complete story of the big bank theory. This 
is how it all began. <sighs> not a thing, not a thing, not a thing. <sighs> a few people, very few. And no money, no, not a sou. Wampum, no silver spoons. Without money, there were no shops and no credit. Default swaps. Then there was a great big boom, a pop -pop population boom. Money, money everywhere. The first love money is that money attracts money.
the Literature Prize. The Ig Nobel Prize for Literature this year is awarded to Ireland's Police Service and Garda Shiakona for writing and presenting more than 50 traffic tickets to the most frequent driving offender in the country, Pravo Yazdi, whose name in Polish means driving license. The winner could not or would not be with us today. But we have a special tribute speaking on behalf of all her fellow Polish licensed drivers. Here is Karolina Lewisztam. Hi. Uh, as a Polish person, I would like to thank the Irish people. Uh, a few years ago, the Polish people virtually invaded Ireland. So we've stolen all of their jobs, possibly some of their cars too. We've drank a sea of their Guinness, but they just keep loving us. And they love us so much that they want us to have fun. They want us to have fun driving. They want us to drive like maniacs. They're like, you know, go out there, do whatever you want. And the Irish police even invented this character, Mr. Pravo Yazdy. So he will take all the blame for any traffic violation any Polish person will ever commit. So I, would just, I, I just wanted to say thank you, guys. Thank you very much. We are, we are very deeply moved by that. And uh, we'll try to come over more often. Thank you. Is Orhan Pamuk back from dinner yet? Orhan, if you're here, come on up and join us. We do have a seat for you up here. We hope your dinner was good. The 19, excuse me, the 2006 Nobel Laureate in Literature, Orhan Pamuk. And we have an after-dinner chaser for him. <laughs> That's not the cheap stuff, either. <laughs> the Public Health Prize, the Ig Nobel Prize for Public Health, is awarded this year to Elena Bodnar, Raphael Lee, and Sandra Marijan of Chicago, Illinois, for inventing a brassiere that in an emergency can be quickly converted into a pair of gas masks, <laughs> one for the brassiere wearer and one to be given to some needy bystander. Here is Elena Bodnar. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, isn't that wonderful that women have two breasts, not just one? <laughs> we can save not only our own life, but also the life of a man of our choice next to us. <laughs> I would like to thank you, my colleagues from the University of Chicago. Even more, I would like to thank my dear husband, whose extensive expertise on bra clasps came in very handy when I developed my first prototype. I will give more details during my MIT lecture on Saturday, but it is important to mention that it takes only 25 seconds for average woman to use this protective personal device. Five seconds to remove, convert, and apply her own mask, and 20 seconds to wonder who the lucky man is she's going to say. <laughs> Well, the times of naivety and unpreparedness have passed. We have learned to accept risk. <laughs> and we have learned to appreciate preparedness and prevention. That's why I always wear convertible bra mask. And when I am here next year, I hope 
every woman in this auditorium will also be wearing one. Thank you very much. And now I believe we have a demonstration by the inventor. I would like to ask uh, for three volunteers, preferably Nobel laureates, to assist me in demonstration. <laughs> A suggestion if you are going for an event like Ig Nobel where you can actually get surrounded by more than one Nobel laureate, you better have more than one bra. And now, it's time for the win a date with a Nobel laureate contest. And here's Karen Hopkin to tell us about our laureate. Thanks, Snugglebug. That is a hard act to follow. Some laureates are cuties, and most are quite bright. Tonight's prize is so hot he emits his own light. <laughs> Marty Chalfi won the 2008 Nobel Prize in Chemistry for showing that living things look better with a healthy greenish glow. A folk guitarist, Chalfi enjoys playing with worms and singing Swedish drinking songs while hopping like a frog. <laughs> Take this one home and your friends will be green with envy, if not fluorescent marker proteins. Let's give a warm win a date welcome to Marty Chalfi. Let's see which lucky audience member will win a date with this Nobel laureate. When you entered the hall, the ushers handed you an attractive printed program. Please pick it up and look through it. If your program contains a picture of Charles Darwin playing dice with the Archbishop of Canterbury, then you have won a date with this Nobel laureate. Come on up and claim your prize.
Okay, okay, just exchange phone numbers and whatever else you can take care of later. Okay, thank you very much. Congratulations. The Mathematics Prize, the Ig Nobel Prize in Mathematics is awarded this year to Gideon Gano, governor of Zimbabwe's Reserve Bank, for giving people a simple, everyday way to cope with a wide range of numbers, from very small to very big, by having his bank print banknotes with denominations ranging from one cent to $100 trillion. The winner could not or would not be with us tonight. And the final prize of the evening, the Ig Nobel Biology Prize. The Biology Prize this year is awarded to Fumiaki Taguchi, Song Guafu, and Zhang Guanglei of Kitasato University Graduate School of Medical Sciences in Japan for demonstrating that kitchen refuse can be reduced more than 90% in mass by using bacteria extracted from the feces of giant pandas. Here is Fumiaki Taguchi. The other panda. Panda is greeting all of you together here tonight. Risky. <laughs> First of all, I let me tell you that I owe my being here today to two important body of my career. They are giant panda and they are feces. <laughs> The panda is a humorous and adorable looking animal, but panda feces don't look like usual animal feces. <laughs> Steam of leaves of main diet bamboo are excreted almost undigested. So with no stinking smell, which is good for the experiments. <laughs> Without panda, and their feces, I would never have thought of finding bacteria over <laughs> 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 OK, thank you. Thank you very much. We have a demonstration. <laughs> the V-chip monitor has called off the demonstration. Before we finish up the evening with the conclusion to the opera, it's time for the triumphal handshaking with Professor Lipscomb. All of the new Ig Nobel, excuse me, all of the new Ig Nobel Prize winners will now emerge one by one through the sacred curtain, there to receive a token handshake from Nobel laureate William Lipscomb. Where do I stand? Are we all set? Let the emerging and the shaking begin.
We remind you to join us this Saturday afternoon at MIT at 1 o'clock, MIT room 10250, where all of the new winners and a few of the returning winners will give five-minute lectures where they will try very hard to explain what they did and why they did it, if they know. And now, the final act of the Big Bank Opera. Our singers and musicians will be joined by the Nobel laureates and the other distinguished scientists whom you see here on stage. Here is our narrator, Karen Hopkin. Thank you, you scrumptious hunk of MC. It's time for the thrilling conclusion to our opera. All the big banks have collapsed, with the notable exception of one commendably well-run bank that came through the crisis just fine and is generously providing the funding for tonight's performance of this opera. Our two bankers, now former bankers, are back in their favorite bar. They're surrounded by the many now unemployed scientists who once helped the banks build the technology that shot all the money into space. Now it's so-called happy hour. It's time to sing about a new beginning. So raise your glasses high, if you're wearing glasses, and let's drink in the spectacle. Sure. 
Sears, Brandon Grimmett, Roberta Gilbert, Mark Andelman, and conductor David Stockton. And the Nobel laureates. And now, Professor Jean Burko Gleason will give the traditional Ig Nobel goodbye, goodbye speech. Now, please let us honor all of the many people who helped put this ceremony together. They're scattered all around here, back there, back there, over here, all these people, people at the projectors. There's one guy strapped to the ceiling running the spotlight up there. A hand for everybody, please. And, and all the Sanders Theater people, thank you. Now, would the, would the Ig Nobel Prize winners and the Nobel laureates and the keynote speaker uh, and the 24-7 speakers, would you please all come assemble at the front of the stage for a pointless photo opportunity? <laughs> If you would, uh, if you could all scrunch together, and maybe the people in the front row, if, if you're still capable of kneeling down, if you could kneel down. <laughs> and let's get Professor Lipscomb in here. And uh, now, if you'd all please whack your hands together and shower these people with self esteem. <laughs> Elena Bodnar, do you have one more bra? Do you have one more bra on by any chance? <laughs> oh. Well, um, if you'd like to stay for a couple minutes and help us clean this up, there are several thousand paper airplanes here. We'd greatly appreciate it. Now, on behalf of the Harvard Radcliffe Science Fiction Association and the Harvard Radcliffe Society of Physics Students and the Harvard Computer Society, especially from all of us at the Annals of Improbable Research, please remember this final thought. If you didn't win an Ig Nobel Prize tonight, and especially if you did, better luck next year. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>